to access a data access layer within IRSP Designer. The data access layer uh, that we have built, uh, generated for you in any IRSP Designer application is actually a very powerful uh, set of classes that you can do a variety of things. Now, generally, data access layer is automatically used for you at the UI layer, but in some cases, you probably want to programmatically go in and make certain changes to your application. And so what we can do is we can discuss a variety of things, how you can handle um, customizations to your application programmatically by using data access layer functions. Some examples of those are how you can retrieve records uh, from the database, how you can do paging, paging as in, for example, display the first 10 records next, and then the next 10 records, and then the next uh, 10 records, and so on. Uh, we can also show you how you can update uh, data in records uh, very easily by using the data access layer. Uh, you can also use a variety of AND and OR clauses. Generally, at the user interface uh, level, uh, we may have not given you the full flexibility that is available at, uh, the, at the code customization uh, uh, layer, partly because you know, the, at the UI layer, uh, sometimes it becomes uh, much harder uh, to do. As an example, uh, you know, you, we do not currently support the OR clauses at the UI level of Ironspeed Designer, uh, but you can certainly add the OR clauses programmatically uh, if you so choose to. Um, also, you can modify the order by. Normally, again, at the user interface level in IMSP Designer, we'll give you choices of up to two order by clauses. Uh, but programmatically, you can have three or four or five order by clauses uh, that you might want, or any, any number, effectively. There's no restriction on, on that. And certainly, you can do things like deleting records and, 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 and so on. So let's talk about, before we get into exactly how you would do that, let's talk about conceptually how what, are, what is available to you and how you would uh, use that. So one of the things that we do in RSP Designer is we actually generate two classes for you as part of uh, being able to access uh, the database. These two classes usually have a suffix that is added uh, to the end of the table name. So let's say if you have an employees table, we will create an employees record and an employees table class for you. And the employees record class is referred to as the record class. When, we, when I normally speak or when, we, when you look at the documentation, we always talk about the record class uh, being used. A record class is nothing but essentially a class that represents a row of data from the database effectively. So you could effectively take an instance of that record class and essentially access all of the data uh, for, for that row. So you could say record.firstName, record.lastName, and so on. Uh, keep in mind that this record class is different from a record control class. Uh, record control class is a UI class, and basically what that does is essentially handles the display part. But the record class is essentially something which corresponds to a row in the database. One other thing to keep in mind is the record class uh, has all of the variables available to you that are columns in your database. So like I said, first name, last name and they are strongly typed. Strongly typed in the sense that if a field is string, it's string, but if it's a field is a date time field, for example, let's say higher date as an example, it will be of type date time, not string essentially. So this way it allows you to effectively operate on that field uh, just like you would normally operate on any date time field effectively. So you can do you know, formatting of that field, you can you know, add days to it and things like that. And the same thing applies to all of the other field types, whether those are currency fields, whether they are, you know, number fields, whether they are percentage fields, and so on. So that's why it's strongly typed. The second class is a table class. The table class essentially, uh, we of course refer to as a table class. And table class essentially corresponds to the schema of your table. So the schema, of course, contains things like, you know, what columns are there defined, for example, and so on. And you can, of course, retrieve those columns and operate on them as necessary. And the schema class also contains, because you, if, whenever you are operating on multiple records, you would use the schema class effectively, or the table class, as opposed to the record class. Uh, so instead of using uh, employees record 
dot get records, that would be a very odd way of essentially requesting a uh, list of records. You would effectively do employees table dot get records, so that way you're retrieving all of the data from uh, the employees table here. Um, like I mentioned to you, the record class uh, has easy access to all of the fields, and its type is going to be strongly typed. And then some of the common methods that you can use on the record class are save, delete, get ID. And get ID is very useful uh, whenever you have a composite primary key. Uh, keep in mind that you can still use, you know, like customer ID or employee ID uh, as an individual field, uh, like I mentioned above here. Uh, like first name and last name, but also if you want to essentially get a key value pair, you would do get ID. There are two other functions that are very important. One is called parse and the other is called format. And effectively what these do is they change the data from one representation to another. In the case of format, it ch takes the database representation, changes it to a display representation effectively. So the format will be formatted based on your current culture settings and say, Ah, it's dollar thirty two point forty seven uh, so the dollar appeared there based on the format. The parse is the opposite of that, which is essentially you know if the value that's typed by the user is dollar thirty two point forty five parse will strip off the dollar uh, take the thirty two point forty five turn it into a decimal field, and prepare it for saving it into the database. okay, what's the table class uh, do? The table class basically allows the easy querying of the database. And in this case, it has a number of properties and methods. A number of shared properties, like for example, you have access to every column. Like you could say employees table dot first name, um, for example, in order to refer to the first name column. And then you can then refer to um, uh, you know, dot uh, you know, uh, name, for example, or dot uh, data type, for example, and so on. So you could do employees table dot first name dot data type, as an example, in order to get uh, the data type for the first name uh, field. You also have a whole bunch of common shared functions that allow you to retrieve data from the database, get record, and get records uh, are an example of that. They both take a where clause, if necessary, and return, essentially, the, the data related to that, uh, that clause. You can do delete record. Uh, get count and get columns basically. So you have a lot of flexibility in what you can what you can do. So why use the record or table classes? The reason for using the record or table classes are that records are returned as objects and not an array of fields. Uh, and then each field has its own native type. And the reason for that, essentially, the benefit of that is that you are essentially operating, uh, you know, in a very clean and a strongly typed environment. Uh, rather than in an array of fields effectively. Uh, we also support paging automatically, and it could be database specific. It is row num, so for example, in Oracle we would use row num, but if it's not available in SQL Server 2000 or 2005, we don't. We figure that I, another mechanism in order to do the paging uh, for you. Uh, we support foreign key expansion automatically, so when you refer to employee ID, or you know, for example, we might display the last name of the employee, or, or if in the case of a customer, we might display the company name as an example. So this allows you to effectively support what's called the display foreign key as very easily. You can, of course, support the order by, either by ID or by the display foreign key as. And then a number of other logistical details are handled automatically for you, like an opening and closing of the connection, uh, automatic caching of the data, that is done for you, and this particular set of uh, uh, this particular approach works for you whether you're using inline or whether you're using stored procedures. So you will still make the same call underneath the hood. ISP designer will call a stored procedure if you have decided to go that mechanism in order to actually load the data using the stored procedure rather than an inline uh, SQL. So you benefit from the performance improvements that you get with stored procedure. Uh, regardless of whether, so you don't have to call the sort procedure directly yourself. You simply make the same get records call, and the sort procedure will be called appropriately. And then, of course, you don't need to know the SQL uh, related to that. One example is, let's say, for example, you want to make the following query: select star from customers where country is U.S. and order uh, order by state in ascending order, so Alabama or uh, you know uh, 
shows up at the top, if you will, uh, and uh, Wyoming uh, shows up at the bottom. And you also want to return only the 10 records from page 17. So it would be whatever, uh, record number 170 through uh, 179, as an example. And you want to essentially, uh, if in, normally in SQL, this would be returned as an array of arrays. Uh, but if you use the data access layer generated by RNC Designer, you would effectively do customers table dot get records, specify a where string, specify an order by clause, and then give the page number zero based, and that's why it's 16, and the number of records, which is 10. So that's how easy it is for you to essentially call a set a function and use the data access layer in order to get uh, get uh, get uh, get records from the database. Let's talk about a few additional things over here, and I'll um, go through this a little bit faster here. What we want to be able to do is make sure that you always start and end a transaction as well as commit the transaction. This is called a transaction boundary. And uh, normally, uh, it's done for you if we generate the code. If we generate the button click handler, uh, then this transaction boundary is automatically defined for you. If you were to write your own custom button, uh, then you may need to actually do a start and an end transaction uh, by yourself. Uh, commit should only be done uh, when you're saving the data, obviously, and then make sure that you always handle exceptions in the sense that you know if, the, if you're writing your own custom code, there may be an error given by the database, uh, and then you want to be able to report that uh, error to the end user. So here's how the code might look like with the transaction boundary. It essentially calls dbutils.start transaction and then eventually it calls end transaction. In between, it'll call commit and rollback uh, while, uh, it, during the time when it is actually updating or reading the data from the, from the database, basically. OK, um, there are a number of different ways that you can call get record. Get record has many variations. Like, for example, you can uh, call based either on an ID uh, and request uh, essentially a mutable record, a mutable record meaning that you intend to edit it, uh, if you will, uh, so that you can, uh, you can essentially update it and save it. Or you can pass a where string uh, where uh, you can say, you know, country equal USA, for example, either as a string um, and then order by clause. Keep in mind that if there is no record that matches the criteria, you will get nothing or null returned for you. And also keep in mind that get record, because it's singular, it returns only one record, even if uh, the number of uh, people that match this query, number of records that match this query may be more than one. And uh, there is no guarantee which record you will return, because SQL Server doesn't give you a guarantee, or Oracle doesn't give you a guarantee. It will pick the first one and return uh, to you. But normally, if there's only one, you can effectively safely use get record without any problem. Get records is, uh, so here's an example, more details on get record, which is with an ID. Uh, there are two uh, ID as a string, ID as a key value pair. Uh, and this is the only way to get an updatable record. So in some cases, you may have to call get record again if you're updating a record uh, in this format uh, just before, so that uh, those are mutable or editable records uh, that you'll get. Um, you can take a string, and there are some examples of that uh, that I've shown you over here. Similarly, you can also uh, go to get records, and get records also has four variation. All return an array of record objects, and uh, these four variations basically are described here where you can essentially take the where string and takes any where string. Uh, it'll return back non-updatable records, but then you can essentially go back and get an updatable, re updatable record by calling get record again. Uh, returns all matching records. There's no limit, so be careful. If you have a million customers, then all millions will be uh, re returned back, and you may run out of memory effectively or may slow down the, the system. So generally, that's why we recommend paging, and, and that's the reason uh, where you can benefit uh, from that by essentially specifying a page number and the number of records to, to return. Uh, and here's an example of how you might, you might do this. Uh, there's other um, version of get records. Keep in mind that page index is zero based, and page number is the number of records uh, to return. And all version of get records return non-updatable records, meaning read-only records. If you want a, to be able to update, you would then call get record with the, the mutable to be true, and 
then update the update the, the data. Okay, another version of get records effectively that is uh, that is available uh, to you. Let's talk a little bit about the where clause, and these are the last couple of slides over here, and then I'll take questions uh, from you. The where clause effectively is an object that is an alternative to a where string. You know, we saw some examples of the where string where I could say country equal quote USA quote. But in some cases, you can actually benefit from faster parsing, fast, faster execution by using a where clause, a where clause, and it gives you more flexibility with operators and values. And you also don't have to worry about uh, you know exact field names because sometimes there are special characters or spaces uh, in the field names, and this way you can essentially use the field object or the column object rather than essentially using a str uh, string representation of uh, of that field. And again, uh, you know, no SQL, SQL where syntax knowledge is necessary when you were to do the where clause. And here are some examples of where clauses where you can essentially create a where clause, BIM WC as where clause, new where clause. Then you can essentially call and, uh, I and, and essentially, uh, you know, add multiple and clauses. And then, of course, you can also create a new where clause or a sub where clause like WC2 over here and or certain clauses together within that and and it at the highest level. So that way you can essentially create nested uh, nested where clauses effectively as, as you might uh, need that. So the OR facility is available at the programmatic level even though it may not be available at the user interface level of Iron Speed Designer. Finally, the order by object is essentially exactly the same uh, idea as where by clause. It gives you an option to essentially uh, sort the data that is available to you, and you can order. Uh, you can essentially create a new order by clause, and then add as many as you want in ascending, descending, or whichever order uh, you would want uh, to, to display uh, the data as. Uh, and finally, the last thing is that I mentioned to you that the get record, there's only one version which essentially updates, allows you to update. So here's an example set of code where you're getting records uh, from the database. Uh, so you say, uh, you know, customerstable.getrecords, and it, let's say it returns back, uh, you know, all of the customers effectively here. Then for each one of the records, what we're going to do is we're going to essentially call get record and pass true as a second argument so that we essentially get um, a mutable or an editable record and then update that record and then save it basically. So that's uh, all I have for data access uh, layer and I'm willing to actually take uh, questions